Good morning, church. We're so glad that you decided to join us this morning. Yes, if you are like us, we like to do church in our home with our friends and family. So if you are in a home fellowship this morning, let's go ahead and greet one another. And if you're by yourself watching online, please chat below and let us know where you're watching from. We're excited to have you. church family we're so excited that you're joining us for our first sunday service today where we have all of the kids and the families together so let's join in to worship together and let's have fun let's get to it Now it's like springtime with you, making all things new. Your light is breaking through the dark. This love it is sweeter than wine, bringing joy, bringing life. Your hope is rising like the dawn. This is what you do. This is what you do. You make me come alive. This is what you do. This is what you do. It's always like springtime with you. Making all things new. Your light is breaking through the dark. This love it is sweeter than wine. Bringing joy. Your hope is rising like the dawn. This is what you do, this is what you do. You make me come alive. This is what you do, this is what you do. You make me come alive. This is what you do, this is what you do. You make me come alive. This is what you do. This is what you do. You make me come alive. 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 For the first time, finally living for the first time. It's like I'm living for the first time. Finally living for the first time. It's like I'm living for the first time. I'm finally living for the first time. It's like I'm living for the first time. Finally living for the first time. This is what you do, this is what you do. You make me come alive, this is what you do, this is what you do. You make me come alive, this is what you do, this is what you do. You make 
saying we come alive This is what you do, this is what you do You make me come alive You make me come alive You make me come alive
Well, thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you've been enjoying our online services as well as the many different shows that we now have available on the live media network. Thank you for everybody who's partnered with us so far. Some of the platforms that we utilize are free, but the network itself is not. And so it is all being made possible by everybody who's choosing to give and to partner with us. So from here at Church Alive, we wanna thank everybody who's done so. And if you haven't partnered with us already, if you would consider giving into the Church Alive ministry today, we have ways where you can give by phone, you can give via our website, or you can also just mail in a check and we have all the information available down below. But once again, thank you so much for everybody who's partnered with us. Giving to your local church should be easy. And with Tithely, now it's as easy as sending a text. To get started, text GIVE to your church's giving number. You'll receive a reply linking you to the setup page. Securely enter your information and you're all set. Now you're ready to give anywhere at any time. Just enter the amount, and you'll receive a confirmation text and an email with your receipt. If you've made a mistake, no problem. Just text refund in the reply. Text giving with Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church. We hope that you've enjoyed service so far. I want to inform you of the fun things happening at your Church Alive family. We have our Church Alive Home Fellowship starting soon. So if that's something that you feel like you would like to do or host your home, please let us know on our website. On the ministry tab, we have a preliminary sign up that will be going out soon. So make sure you get involved in that. Also, don't forget our live media network. You can find it on any Roku device. You can download our app and give us good ratings because we love good ratings. Um, and then also um, check us out on our YouTube page or Facebook, all of that fun stuff. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning from wherever you are uh, on planet Earth and on whatever platform you're on. Thank you for joining us. This is the first Sunday of the month, and that means an all-family service. So we get everybody together in one area to do our praise and worship and have a message and all that for the whole family. So this is a family-friendly message, of course. And normally we do a, a skit or a, an illustrated sermon on our first Sunday because of all the kids are together. But today it's a little bit different because it's the first Sunday of the New Year. Everybody say New Year. Everybody say New Year. One, one two, three. New Year. Okay. New Year means new opportunities, new things, new, um, you know, uh, you know, being able to let go of the old and grab onto the new. And so um, we're we, next week is going to be a little bit more in depth about our New Year's, um, you know, plans and stuff like that. But for today, because it's all family service, there's there's some stuff, some things that are percolating around in my heart, my spirit, my mind about what I feel like the Lord is is uh, shifting us into for the new year. Now, the new era, which we talked about in the prophetic um, uh, messages, has already begun, but some of the things that, you know, God is the one who created uh, morning and night, and He's created the seasons, He created the years, He created uh, months, He had gave the moon and the stars uh, and, the, and the moon in the sky to help uh, with seasons and stuff like that. So it's His idea 
for things to roll along and to change and then to roll along and one thing comes to an end and another begins. That's one of the, I mean, he's like that. He knows that the human heart, the human experience needs change. And so he never changes, but we, we need change. But anyway, so this is a family friendly service. So everybody say hi. One, two, three. Hi. Okay. Well, we're glad to have you here today. And so what we're thinking of what we're doing today is going to share um, a, a, a kind of a revelation, even though it's it's part, I mean, it's like one of the main heartbeats of the Bible as it relates to hit God's Word. If I say God's Word, one, two, three, God's Word. God's Word is unchangeable, okay? You know, by His Word, He he spoke the universe into existence. He created all things by His Word, and He sustains all things by His Word. Word and so his word is very important to us. And so, as I was going through the week and thinking about his word, and then um, as I was laying in bed praying, I felt like the Lord was sharing. It's like follow after, follow after my word, follow after my word, and which brings the whole scripture of Psalms. Many of y'all know the Psalms, uh, one hundred nineteen, one hundred five. Uh, the the word is a lamp unto my feet. We're going to unpack that a little bit because I think it's very important for this this new era, especially as we go into this new year, is to bring forward what God is speaking to you in His Word, this written word right here. But God is not silent right now. What I'm saying is, is God is speaking to His servants all the time. That's why the prophetic office has not been put aside because that's the basically the public speaking of it. We all hear from the Lord inside for our own life. Now, what he's telling us will never contradict his word. So if you're hearing something say, oh, yeah, you can do that. It's okay to lie or to steal that, you know, you deserve it. Then that's not God's voice, you know, because he will always speak what he has lined up, uh, what he said in his word. And so as I was in prayer one evening thinking about that, it's like, follow after my word. And I could, I, I, I saw his word kind of in my heart, kind of what he said, and it's like I felt myself like following that in the spirit, like following, like it, like like I was I was keeping my eye on that, and I was uh, going to with that. And as I began to do that, the the peace of God uh, kind of kind of fell in my heart, and that's one of the things that, that was the one of the words that he is speaking is peace, you know. And so um, I I was seeing it in my spirit, and it's like. You know, Jesus is the Word made flesh, and Jesus says, pick up your cross and follow after me, you know. And so, we, it, it, you know, putting the, the Scripture part together, that is biblical to follow after His Word. And I know it's, it sounds kind of elementary, you know, to say, well, just follow after what He says. But there has to be a revelation imparted to people for them to really understand you know, not only are you to get in your word, this the written word like this right here, and to read what it says, and to uh, to, to to love what it's the we gotta we gotta hear what it's that it says when we when we read in our minds or when we when we read to ourselves we're hearing that in our spirit man and it's going in our spiritual ears so we hear what he says we receive what he says we love what he says and we obey what he says and so. We, we, you know, this, our general living is, is based on the word, but there are many times when the, when the, when our God speaks directly to us, again, it will never com- contradict what he's saying in his word. He'll speak something specifically for our life or what we need to do in a situation and all that. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word spoken out of his mouth. He is not a silent God. And there's a lot of people that, well, I, well, I never hear the Lord, you know. Well, sometimes we got to get quiet down. That's a whole nother lesson. And because this is our family service, I want to get to this point right here of about following his word, following what he's saying. If we'll just hear what he says, whether it's our written word or whether it's a rain word, when he's speaking into our heart to, for us to do something or not do something, to follow that. If we will simply follow that, we'll, I think we, you know, we stay out of danger and we stay in God's blessing. For the little ones out there, I don't know if the little kids can see this. What do you think this is right out here? Because this is family service. Kids, anybody know what this is? All right. Well, this is this cool little gadget I bought. And it's a little headlight. It's a, it's a lamp. Some people call it a flashlight. Some people call it, you know, a, a, a headlight. Uh, but it's it's you know in, in another term it's it's a uh, 
It's a lamp. It's a it's a light. And why would I wear this light for the service? Not I'm um, you know to look silly and goofy. Now let me ask you this: If you were outside at nighttime, like maybe you had to go feed the animals or something like, let me turn this off. Here we go. If you were outside, it was good and dark outside, and there was no lights outside. You know, having a light to show us where to go is a pretty important thing, when you say. What if you were like, uh, for uh, let's go back to the feeding the animals. So you know, we've got animals, and we need to go feed the kitties and feed the puppies and feed all that. And sometimes, if it's if the lights are off on the porch and and it's not any it bright, you know, you want to be careful that you don't step on something or kick something. You know, you want to know how to even you know even if you think you know the way, sometimes it's good to to have a light to see as you're walking out there and, and going to the, the the kitties bowl or the the dogs pen you know food bowl. Make sure that you're there. Now imagine yourself uh -oh, like in a cave. You know, there's a lot of people, a lot of people who were cave splunkers, I think is what they're called. They're exploring caves and maybe they, they lose their light or something like that. I don't know if many of y'all have been in a, inside of a cave, but well, they always, they always the guides and all that always think it's so much fun to get to that certain point where they turn off the light. And no matter how long you sit there, your eyes never get adjusted to the darkness because it's totally and completely dark. Now imagine being in that cave and you the lights went off all of a sudden and you couldn't see one of these would mean the difference between life and death in a situation like that. Even a lighter, anything that puts out some sort of light so you can see where you're going inside of a, a dark cave would be a really dangerous place to be without light. And so um, we want to make sure we don't step off into some ravine in the middle of the, you know, we can crawl around and stuff like that. But um, it'd be pretty important to have a light. Well, in a lot of sense, you know, you and I are living in a, a world, I mean, all power in heaven and on earth have been given to Jesus. He's won that back at the cross and the resurrection from the dead. He won all the, the that, that back. He's got the authority now. However, this world, and he's letting things go, he's not letting things go, he's allowing us to stay here until it's time for the new heavens and the new earth and when he recreates everything. There's going to be uh, a lot more to come, but it's kind of like there's there's some dark places in our life and in the world that it, and we don't know where to step and we don't know what to do because it's dark. You know, we can't exactly see. We think we should go this way, and that's why I said, you know, even like if you're you feed the animals every day and you walk to the same path every day, uh, when it's really dark outside, you know, there are little creepy critters that are crawling around too that might have not been there yesterday or something else and you know you kick something or you you know whatever you need a little so even if you think you know it's it's always good to have a little light you know and so um in in this world it's come sometimes uh, not every day i mean yes we need the word of god every day but um when we're walking out this life on earth in, in our bodies and here, you know, God has provided for his written word to cover our life and to help us if we just, you know, read it and hear it and receive it and love it and obey it, then that helps us get through our general life situations. That is like having a light on my head as I'm reading the word, I hope my hair is, my hair is all messed up. <laughs> um, when I have this light on, I'm able, in, in the in the spiritual sense, I'm able to see my way in life because I this this light is like a a, a lamp unto my feet. It's like a light to me that I might see which way God wants me to go. Like when I was having that that vision and that uh, that revelation of God, just when he was showing me, just follow what I've said. Just follow what I said. That Keep your eye on that and follow it. And so my eyes are on it. And sometimes if it, you know, I got to keep, keep, keep it lit up and stuff. And this word shows me my path, shows me the way I'm supposed to go. You don't, you don't have to, you don't have to not know what to do because God wants us to get with him on a regular basis and allow him to direct us and guide us. Now let's read real quick because it's a family service so it's not going to be this 
hour long thing like what the adults can handle. But I want the kids to know that you know you're not you're not too young to understand that God's word lights up the way that we're supposed to go. If we just see what He says then do that. Let's, let's take, for instance, for the little ones out there, you know, we know the, the Ten Commandments. There's like a Ten Commandment that says, um, thou shall not steal. For you, it's, I'm not going to take something that doesn't belong to somebody else. Okay? that That is a light for our path so we can stay out of trouble because if we'll simply follow that, don't take something that doesn't belong to you, then we won't get into trouble in that sense, by taking things that don't belong to us, okay? Another one might be, thou shall not lie. A word for, uh, a way you can understand is, you're not supposed to lie. Don't lie. Which means if you tell the truth and you can, and you follow, you follow that word about not lying, I need to tell the truth and we'll stay out of trouble in a lot of ways. Now, there are times and situations that maybe we do make a mistake or something. And so, um, we want to make sure that we don't just, you know, like my brother did it. He pushed, you know, he, he, you know, did this or that. Anyway, so that's just a couple of examples about your, the word, you know, being a light to your path. So you know which way to go. You know, there's a lot of, of the Ten Commandments that have, I mean, the Ten Commandments, not a lot. All of them have carried over into the New Covenant. And so we want to make sure that we that is a light to our path. And so... But the whole word is a light to our path to show us which way to go. Now, I want to take it a little bit further because some in there's some church families don't don't talk about the God the God's revelation to individual people like he's he's speaking to you right now for right now. That can be lined up in his word, it doesn't contradict that, but that he's talking to you about I want you to walk in peace. Don't don't worry about it. Stick stick with me. I called you to this. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna forsake you. I'm standing with you. You're gonna make it. You just follow. Follow me as we keep going. I want you to go do what I said to do. I want you to keep getting up and keep going. And don't worry about if anybody likes it or not. You know that might be a word for you. And if you follow that about staying in the peace and not letting yourself get rattled, then you will stay on that path. And, and that path is going to take you to your destiny as you walk it out with the Lord. So let's read this Psalms, um, Psalms chapter 119, verse 5. Oh, and I must, this is, oh, that my ways were directed and established to observe you. Excuse me, let's start again here. Oh, that my ways were directed and established to observe your statues, hearing, receiving, loving, and obeying them. Then I shall not be put to shame by failing to inherit your promises when I have respect to all your commandments. So here is um, this psalm that's talking about, oh, that my ways were directed and established. He's saying, I need help knowing which way to go. Oh, if my ways were directed and established, you know, if I knew which way to go. Well, God is trying to tell us which way we're supposed to go. And it's so simple. Follow after what I've said. If I've said it, follow after that. That's where the faith and the trust and those things kick in. Now, let's actually go to the, the, the main scripture for today. Are you getting anything? It's so simple. It's like elementary, you know, but we need these teachings, you know. We need to hear about something so simple as in the Lord saying, what, what am I asking you to do? What have I told you in your prayer time that I want you to do? Okay, why aren't you doing that? If you'll do that, that peace will be there, that joy will be there because you're following after me. Do it to the best of your ability. See, it's that simple. It's that simple. We don't, you know, God doesn't want it to be complicated. He wants to like, he, his word to us, he, he wants to use his word to us to light which way we're to go in this world and to show us the steps on where we're supposed to step, you know? And so it's so it's so simple, but we need to be reminded about this sometimes. We need to be reminded about how important it is to follow after what the Lord is saying. So the, the main scripture here this morning is this one right here, and it's Psalms 119, verse uh, 105. Your word, and this is this written word, but also that word that comes to us in our spirit 
or even through other people that are speaking on his behalf um, to you. And so there are a lot of times when somebody will put you on your heart, put put you on their heart, and they'll, hey, and I'm just praying for you, and you came to my mind, you should, you know. So there are those times like that, and there are times that you know that maybe God didn't really send them at all. But anyway, that's that's a whole other thing. God has your best. He wants to make sure you are helped. He is a good God. He is absolutely good. He is absolutely good, and He wants to help you. He wants to light up the darkness with His Word to show you, I have said this. I did not say that, 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 or that. I don't speak worry. I don't speak concern. I don't speak, um, uh, you know, fear. I speak righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, if you're living in sin and you're doing something wrong... He will speak. You better stop that, okay? And that is him. That is that's being a good God because he knows the best way to live. Because if he tells us something and we don't do that, then it's like we're in the middle of the cave. You remember? It's like I'm gonna get. It'd be like the Lord saying, "You're in the middle of a dark cave. You can't see. Here's a light. I'm gonna let you use this to get out of the cave. Now, just one step in front of another as you're walking out, and you can shine it around so you can see that." Not listening to what God's saying and trying to find your way out is like somebody in the cave turning off the stinking flashlight. I don't know which way to go. I don't know what to do. And then they fall and get hurt or something like that. Is that God's, is that God's fault? The answer is no, because he's provided a way that we know which way to go. It's up to us to keep going. Now, I'm going to use, for, for the adults out there, for those in Church Alive, last year about... March, into February, early March, I felt like I was supposed to camp out on the book of Psalms during this time. And I thought about six months, and then I kind of came back. It's off a long time. I have been almost exclusively in a book of Psalms for, um, in March, will be a year. And how in the world can you get fed on a regular basis and and, and keep going with revelation knowledge and, and success when... You're sticking with just one word, one, one, one book of the Bible, you know, which is amazing because right now in this time in human history, Psalms is a prophetic book and I'm a young prophetic uh, prophet in that office learning how to walk this out and going forward, especially in this new era that has begun. You know, we're going to need this power from the Lord to be able to walk it out. And that's not mine, it's His, but to to operate in, in, in this. So, you know, He's told me I want you to, st- you know, not that I don't get scriptures from other places when I'm studying. I don't mean that at all. But for the most part, my study, morning and night, are in the book of Psalms. Now, I've read the, the Bible from cover to cover more than one time, you know. So, and, and, and we all should have, could say, I've read the Bible from cover to cover. I've read the Bible more than one time, actually several times. So, I have the general knowledge and and of the whole the whole thing and many scripture memorized and all that but, but beside that the lamp for me was during this time during this prophetic time when this uh, this unusual time in human history is I needed some prophetic words that are spoken out of the mouth of God not only in the book of Psalms but in my heart personally to be able to navigate for myself and my the ministry so I know where to stand and where to walk and so do you. Going into this new year, this is not a, just a simple thing. This is life to you. What is God saying is he's telling you you need to not worry about this, but trust me. Well, if you if you push push the uh, trust to him and push off the worry, then you're it's this lamp. You're going to be a lot happier as you walk through life knowing that you're following God's plan. If somebody doesn't like it, that's too bad for them. You're going to follow after God's plan. And so, like again, like the book of Psalms, I shared with my the church, you know, we're going to stick in, for me anyway, and I shared. And so, and sometimes we get so antsy, we can't possibly sit here any longer, you know, that kind of thing. So it's going to be kind of strange as the Lord releases me now to, to dive back in on a more broader basis to the rest of the word, which, again, I've already gone through many times, and so it's not like I, I don't know the don't know it, you know. And so, but it's going to be strange. It's going to be like I'm I'm leaving my home, you know, to go into these other areas. But anyway, so 
for you, for you little ones, for you older ones, if we'll just listen, it's kind of like listening to mommy and daddy. You know, if mommy and daddy say, you know, I, I, I don't want you to do this. I want you to do this. They're telling you that for a reason. And so if you don't do what they say and you don't follow their their um, words, then it's kind of, it's kind of uh, like the guy in the cave again, which turns off his light. Then we can get all kinds of problems and get in trouble and all those things. And that's not what God wants for our life. That's why he makes the torch. That's why he makes the light. Yeah? So you can know the way that you should go. <laughs> the way you should go, you should. Anyway, um, it's a family service. We're supposed to have... I, I would have my puppet out here, but... Uh, <laughs> so anyway. So let's get one more scripture in. And then that, that's, that's, that's revelation for this coming year. Now, what the Lord is speaking about this coming year. What that word, you know, last year was the power of the church... We 2021. Listen, don't look at the physical side of everything. Got to look in the spirit. There, we have won. They have lost. That's the end of it. We have won. They have lost. It takes a little while to manifest on the earth, but the power of the church. The church, in many respects, has woken up a lot. Unfortunately, the church, in a lot of respects, did not wake up in certain areas. But that's beside the point. We're going to go with what He's telling us to do, and what He's telling us. You know, he might not tell somebody else. He might tell you, I want you to do this. And, and you know, so anyway, so you got to go with what he's telling you. And not everybody's going to like it or agree to it or whatever. But you know what? You got the headlight for your light, which is the word. And you got to follow out your path, you know, his your your plan that he's given you. Okay, so Psalm, uh, uh, Isaiah 30, chapter 30, verse 21 through 32. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Um and then we're going to close. That's it. That's it. This year we're going to go in. We're going to hear what God says. And if you don't have a word from the Lord, if you don't have something, yes, you have the Bible for your general living. You're wanting to you know, not sin and live for God and, and treat people right and all that. But if you're lacking in a revelation, even he speaks also like when you read a scripture, it'll pop off the page kind of thing and become like I'm speaking to you directly about this scripture. If you don't have that, go spend some time in his word so he can help you. God wants you to walk walk this life out with a plan, with purpose. Nobody is purposeless, okay? Nobody's purposeless. Everybody has a part to play, whether you're little or bigger. So let's read this and then we'll wrap it up, okay? So uh, Isaiah 30, chapter 21. And your ears will hear... A word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it, when you turn to the right hand or when you turn to the left. Sometimes as we're walking this, this life out, you know, we're kind of walking along, sometimes we kind of are, we're walking along and sometimes, you know, maybe we're not paying attention and we get sidetracked and begin. And that's what he's saying. It's like if we kind of get off this way or get off this way, we're going to hear the Lord speaking behind us. This is the way you should go. And when you're hyperactive and have some attention, de what, you know, some stuff going on, it might be kind of easy, like ah, oh, squirrel, you know, and you're, you know, <laughs> you know, you get off. It's it's so funny for those of y'all out there that might relate. Like I'll be sitting at my desk working long, going long. It's like, man, I'm gonna go get me some ice water and get up and go get some ice water. And as I'm there at the refrigerator getting some ice water, it's like, ooh, a sandwich, you know. And I want to get in there and make a sandwich. And I'm eating a sandwich. It's like, ooh, I need to go sit down for a minute and uh, go. You're sitting outside for a minute, and it's like, oh man, there's some trash right here. I need to go pick up that trash real quick. And then you know, I'm picking up the trash and throwing it in a trash can. It's like, oh, the kitty, come here, kitty, kitty. And you know, and you're out there. And a little while later. You're sitting on the lap with the ice water and a half-eaten sandwich, petting a cat, and it's like, what? How, how am I here? You know, so it's easy to to go. And in a spiritual sense, it's much broader than that. That's just a physical thing. I probably You can probably relate. Um, God wants us to have direction from Him for your life. He is so good. And we're going to see the manifestation of God like we have never seen before coming up in this year. God's word has been spoken. His light has been shined. People are going that way. Those who refuse to listen to him, those who refuse to walk by his light. That's not our concern. They're gonna have to, they're gonna have to learn how to do things his way. That's what I'm saying. But for you and for me, 
we're hearing his word. We're just simply going to walk it out. Simply pray, get your word and obey. Pray, get your word and obey. Whether it's to do something or not to do something or just to be still and enjoy your life. You know, enjoying our life is a big deal to God. He did not make our life to just be wasted in futility, worry, doubt, depression, all of that. He wants us to enjoy life. The Bible says, come to him like a child. Come to him in a faith like a child. But also, I think when the child can actually enjoy life a bit. You know, are you enjoying anything about life? Okay, so we need to take an opportunity this year to say, God, I want to follow. You're gonna, I'm going to follow your word, which is going to provide that peace and that joy and that success. Okay, don't forget about that. Our last scripture is, or let me read this again. And your ears will hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it when you turn to the right hand or when you turn to the left. Now watch the results of this. Then you will defile your, your carved images overlaid with silver and your molten images plated with gold. You will cast them away as filthy. And I'm going to pause for filthy stuff because of the content of that rest of that scripture. So God is saying as we, as he's, as we have our eyes on him and, and he's given us direction and we're feeling that purpose flooding in our life and we're like, man, I mean, I just want to live this life before you, God, just as you said. We're going to like see other things that have been idols in our life, things that we're like, that's not, I don't even care about that stuff no more. I don't want to do this or that or whatever. And I'm not talking about just blatant sins, but it can be. So I just want to live to you, God. Thank you for, thank you for lighting up my life so I know which way to go. And you've done that. And so let's, let's go into this new year with this in mind. Get you your word from the Lord. Allow him to help direct your path and simply follow the plan. When it's time for you to take another step, then he will help you direct the light to the next step because he'll give you the word. He'll give you, he'll, it's like he's holding the word, and you know, not you actually. I put it on my head, but actually he's, his word is a lamp unto my feet. His, he's, <laughs> I guess that would have been a better illustration, right? He's shining his word on what we should do, and that's where we need to step, not me, you know. So anyway, so I hope that is a blessing to you this morning. Listen, God loves you. God's got plans for us. He is not leaving us in this state, okay? Uh, more to come about that more next week. Just a, kind of a prophetic move of God for this hour. Just know, just know that he has not forgotten. And when he has spoken something, it is, it is, okay? All right. Well, let's pray, and then you guys have a great rest of your day. We look forward to building the church together with you. If you want more information about Church Alive, please let us know. We're looking for those that might be interested in, in hosting a church, uh, a church Alive um, home church fellowship within your home or a few, uh, building that you might have. You know, it, we're, we're expanding. So if you want to know any more about that, let us know, and we can give you a lot more details. Right? You want to pray? All right. Let's all pray together. Come on. Can we stand up? Can we stand up? Let's stand up. Let's stand on our feet. Everybody stand up. Come on. We're going to go into this honoring the Lord. God, thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus, for being our best friend. Thank you for being our Lord. Thank you for being our Savior. And you want to show us the way to go because you want us to have peace. You want us to have joy. You want us to have contentment. And all of those things we can have as long as we just stay on your path, dear God. I mean, there are times that we don't understand why this is this and that. But if we'll simply walk it out, when you shine the light on something, let us do it. If God's shining a light on you that you just need to rest in his arms, then rest in his arms. Quit worrying about it. If God is saying, for you, I want to help you with this or that or that or this or or whatever the case. Simply just follow what he's telling you to do. It's so simple. Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for being our best friend. Thank you that we can talk to you about anything, share anything with you, ask you for anything. God, you're so gracious to us and we love you so much. Father, bless you, dear God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you in Jesus' name, God. We love you, love you, love you. Thank you for being our God. In Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. Now, we're gonna, let's just, mwah, thank you, God. Come on, let's give him a kiss. Mwah, thank you, God. 
You are worthy of praise and honor. Come on, you want to reach up and give him a hug? Come on, reach up, reach up. Give him a hug. Oh, no, don't tickle him. Don't tickle him now. Just, just give him a hug. Oh, yeah. He loves you. He's a great father. All right. Well, we'll see you uh, next time. And we're getting ready to, I mean, things are ramping up in a big way. It's a good time to be alive. It's a good time to be alive. Amen. Well, God bless you. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope this message encouraged and blessed you as much as it did me. Yes, and if you gave your life to the Lord or made a dedication today, we want to know about it. So please contact us at thechurchalive.com and get info, and we want to walk this journey with you. We hope that you have a very blessed day and a great week. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.